Let's observe how it looks like. It's a T-shape. It's actually a big T-shape. So since it's a T-shape, we can say that we are we are debiting cash book or crediting cash book. So it means that it follows the bank entry system because it has debit side and credit side follows the bank entry system. The cash book follows the bank entry system. Okay. Earlier, I have told you what is a cash book. Cash book is a book of prime entry that combines both cash account and bank account. You can see, right? It combines both cash account and bank account. So you see, you have many columns here. The date column is the normal column. Okay, so I don't want to explain what is a date column. Details column, you want you know what it is. Then you see cash column, bank column, cash column, bank column. So the cash column on the debit side means the debit side of cash account. This is the debit side of cash account. This is the debit side of cash. This is the debit side of bank account. On another hand, this is the credit side of cash account. This is the credit side of bank account. Okay, other than these two, so whenever you receive money, if you receive cash, you write your number here. If you receive it in the form of check, you write your number here. If you, if you make payment with cash, you write your number here. If you make payment with check, you write your number here. Okay, now what is the purpose of the discount columns? You can see that there are two discount columns here. Discount allowed and discount received. Why discount allowed on the left side, discount received on the right hand side? Reason is this. When you receive money from the customer, you debit cash or bank, right? If at the same time, you allow your customer to take cash discount, then you can record it here, maybe $3. Okay, so that's the reason discount allowed is on the debit side. Discount received is on the right. Reason is this. Whenever you make payment to the supplier, maybe you make 100, okay, or you make with a check, then you would write 100, 100 here. If at, the, if at the time you receive discount from supplier, you can record next to it, next to the amount of payment, maybe $4. Okay, so that's the reason discount received is on the credit side. Okay, now, you must know what are, what are the columns here, okay, in a cash book, so that you, 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 can, you can recognize a cash book when you are given one. Okay, you have five transactions here. Now we learn how to record into the cash book. First one, November 1st, start a business by investing 50,000 cash of which 5,000 is put into the bank. That means 45K is left as cash, 5K is, is left as money in the bank. So double entries, debit cash, 45K, debit bank, 5k credit capital 45k sorry 50k these are the dub entries for the first transaction okay i show you how to record into the t accounts debit cash means go to the debit side cash column write the number there debit bank account means go to the debit side bank column write the number there Okay, so let's write them respectively. 45K, 5K, K. Then detail writes what? Name of the other account, write capital. Then only you write the date. Okay, never write the date first. Easiest thing, leave it to the last. Okay, next. Paid rent with $1,500 cash. For this, debit rent, credit cash. Okay, so let's record into the, the cash account in this cash book. 
credit cash means go to the credit side cash column write the number there detail write what write rent did did you write what the date given to you okay now after you have recorded into the cash book okay we have done the first two only right the rest i i do later okay after you have recorded into the cash book you have to transfer some numbers to the account as well so you create a capital account you create a rent account okay just now we have only touched the cash and bank account right we have not done the debit entry here we have not done the credit entry here okay now we do it outside the cash book okay so debit rent account right thousand five here here right cash right the same date on which you pay the rent okay now we credit capital account the fifty thousand okay here don't write fifty thousand otherwise you would not know what to write for the detail you have to split it write 45k write 5k here write cash here write bank here then the date 2020 november 1st okay once done let me know i do the third one Done copying. Mm. Mm, okay. Now, third one. Purchase goods for eight eight zero with check. Purchase goods with for eight hundred and eighty dollars with check. So for this, must know the debit as well from what you learned in part three. You credit bank, debit purchases. Okay, bought goods with check, credit bank, debit purchases. Okay, now credit bank. Credit bank means go to the credit side of the cash book bank column write the number there 880 okay debit purchases right go create a purchases account debit side write the number there then only write detail here write purchases here write bank the date is 17, so write 17. Mm, good, next. Banking cash 260, you are putting cash into the bank. Does it mention that it is personal cash or business cash? When it doesn't mention, we assume that it's always business cash. So it's not an investment here. Debit bank, credit cash. 260. Okay, as always, write number first. Credit cash account means go to the credit side cash column, write the number there first. Debit bank account means go to the debit side, bank column, write the number there first. And then for the detail, here you write cash, here you write bank. How do I know? You observe where you have put the number. This 260 is in the bank column, so here you write the, the name of the other account. This 260 is in the column of cash, so here you write the name of the other account, bank. Okay, so don't have to draw the arrow. I just want you to observe uh, how, we, how we decide what to write for the detail. Okay. 
And then write the date. The date is 20th. Whenever you are doing the data entries within the cache book, within the cache book, when you, whenever you have done both the debit entry and credit entry within the cache book, okay, here we credited cash and debited bank, right? These are known as contra entries. Okay, so you write down somewhere. This is known as contra entries. Is it? Is this very important? Uh, not really, but in top, important for answering theory question in the exam. They may ask you, is what what does this and what does this transaction mean? It's a contra entry. In real life, in the world of accounting, this term is not really important. Okay, just recognize what is the meaning of this term, then it's good enough. Okay, debit cash, credit with bank. As long as you have done two, two entries within the same cash book, then it's a contra entry. Okay, last one. Abu then, a credit customer, paid cash of $1,100 to us to settle a debt of 1130. So lack of $30 received, right? So $30 is for discount. Okay, $30 is discount. Okay, so for this transaction, we receive check from Abu Dan. So debit cash 1100. The other $30 discount allow. Then credit Abu Dan 1130. 1130. Okay, now record debit cash. 1100, discount allow is here. Here write Abu Dan. Here write the date. Okay, now go and credit Abu Dan's account at the bottom. You have you have been given one account, Abu Dan account. Here write 1100. Here write 30. Okay, have, have to split the 1130 into two amount. Then here write cash. Here write discount allow. Okay, I don't have enough space, so I have written it in short form. The date, 25th. Okay, so that's what happened on 25th. Once done, I think, let me know. Mm, good. So we have finished recording these five transitions into the cash book. Okay, you know that cash book is a combination of cash account and bank account. So we have to do balancing process to them to find out how much money we are left with. Okay. You, you see how I do it? Because cash book is a very popular question in the exam. You must know how to complete the entire cash book. It's also worth a lot of marks, a lot of marks. Okay, begin with drawing lines across these columns. Okay, leave a row of space just like what I have here. Draw these four lines. They must be on the same level, okay? Must be on the same level on both the debit side and credit side. First step, total up the discount column first. Write 30 here. The discount received, you have nothing, put a dash there. Even if you don't put a dash, it's fine. Okay, keep it empty. Okay, so for the discount allowed and discount receive column, they are not part of the balancing process. Okay, you just have to total them up. Remember balancing process, see which side is greater, total up the greater side, copy the total to the other side, do deduction, write balance CD, write balance BD. Okay, you, I remember you left out doing that in the crop question. Okay, now you see how I do. You have to do the balancing process two times. Do it one time to the cash account, do it another time to the bank account. So when I'm doing balancing process with the cash account, I focus on these two columns only. Okay, these two cash columns. Okay, so look carefully. I'm just going to do it one time. The debit side is very always that is the greater side for the cash column. So total up the debit side. 
four six one zero zero. Once total up, copy this total to the other side. Four six one zero zero. Next step, do deduction. Then you tell me what amount should appear here. Four four three four zero. Oh. Yeah, four four three four zero. Oh. Good. So write three three four four three four zero oh here. Then bring it down diagonally. Bring it down diagonally. Four four three four zero. Okay. Go on and write balance CD. Must write the word in full balance. CD is the allowed short form to write. Here write balance BD. Okay. Now do the same to the bank column. Debit side is greater for the bank column as well. 5260. Copy this total to the other side. Okay. Then you do the deduction. You tell me what amount you would get. After the, dedu the deduction of what you, you would get here. Yeah? Oh, 4380. Mm. Okay, right. 4380. Bring it down diagonally. Okay. So the, the term balance BD don't have to write it twice because you can share the, the detail of balance BD with both the cash column and bank column. Okay, so that's how you complete the balancing process. Do it two times. One time to the cash column, another time to the bank column. Okay, now complete the date. Here write the date. Here write the first day of the next, next month. December 1st, 2020. Okay, once done with the cash book, let me know. I show you what to do after you have done the cash book. There's one more step to do. Okay, once done with the cash book, let me know. Mm, okay, now after doing a cash book, for the discount column, the totals of the discount columns, we have to transfer to two T accounts. Okay, you have two T empty ships here, two empty T ships here. First one, you create a discount allowed account. The other one, you create a discount receive account. The discount allowed total should be transferred to the debit side of discount allowed account. The total receive, the total discount receive column, you should transfer this to the credit side of discount receive account. Okay, so this is something that many students keep forgetting because this is something that rarely comes up in the exam, but it's something many students keep forgetting. Then you write total for the month as the detail. Okay, write total for the month as the detail. Then you write the date, which is the last day of the month, November 30th. Okay, once done with these two accounts, let me know. I show you a question on cash book. 